When we moved into the San Francisco office 10 years ago, it really set a new standard for us. The neighborhood was different. We moved from the financial district to South of Market. The building type was different. It was a converted warehouse, not a downtown high-rise office building. The aesthetics were different, and we changed our approach to officing. We eliminated virtually all of our private offices, we moved to a benching solution, and we put a lot of emphasis on collaboration. It was 2003, and it really established a very different paradigm for us. And I like to think it had influence on other projects and even the design of some of the other offices in the firm. But a lot has changed in 10 years. So the design of our new office really needs to reflect the way our clients are doing business. They are delivering um, in a more agile manner and our workspace also needs to reflect the way they do business and be able to be really um, responsive and um, flexible so that, um, so that we're able to respond to our clients in the same manner. I think the, 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 the notion of a traditional workspace and you know, I'm not even talking about private offices versus a cubicle. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, your own individual space. I think it's being questioned. You know, the reality is that we want to come to work and want to be with people. You know, yes, there's a lot of virtual, you know, work that can be done. And yes, teams are remotely located. And yes, we want to support that. But there's something magical that happens with all of us coming together and having that face time that we have with each other. And what we do is create it. And so we need, we need more of that. My hope is to be as disruptive as possible. And disruptive, I mean in a very healthy and, and creative and productive way because I think the more we test some ideas here in the office, the outcome will be this leading, um, forward-looking uh, way of working that will be a benchmark for the entire firm. Given the current economy, we decided to renew our lease, exercise our option, and stay here for five more years. That put some considerations in place, we have to think about our headcount and the fact that we are continuing to hire and we don't have space for people. We just don't fit in the space as it is now. So we are having to be creative and how we fit people into the same footprint. So the question is, how do we find opportunity with a limited lease term and an even more limited uh, TI allowance? How do we satisfy the firm's imperative to innovate and to build a culture of innovation? The answer, hack the space. So what do I mean by hack the space? It's really about exploring new ideas and, and experimenting, changing the office in ways that you know, will affect how people, how people work. Uh, the pressure on our space from a headcount standpoint has, has driven us to a mobility strategy. We've got 50 people today that are working without an assigned workspace, and we expect that number to grow. As somebody who is responsible for the delivery of design at Gensler, I think it's important for us to understand what mobility is all about and to actually be as engaged in a mobility program as our clients are. Um, it helps us understand their pain points. It also helps us understand what works and where the challenges might lie. Our client, NVIDIA, and their management company uh, Saris Regis came to us and said, hey, uh, have you guys thought about using IPD on the new NVIDIA project? Uh, that's integrated project delivery. And, you know, we've been kicking that around for a long time since they said, you know, we're using IPD and the idea of a big room on all of our other projects and the tech companies like it. And in fact, they're actually asking for it and demanding it. So we, we talked to them about this idea of a big room, which is just that. It's a big room where the architects, the interior designers, the consultants, the client, the contractor, they all sit together in one big room and collaborate all day long. So last year when the focus was still on moving the office, we actually convened focus groups and interviews with a cross-section of job types. And I think when we, um, you know, switch gears to sort of focus back on to Harrison, there was a lot of uh, things that we found that were really applicable to here in terms of um, how we're changing the way we work. So we asked ourselves three big questions. The first question was about capacity. Um, how do we fit more people in our workspace if we're already dense? 
The second question was about support spaces. Do we have the right ratio and distribution of support spaces given what we recommend to our clients? And the third question was really about the mobile volunteers. Are the number of mobile volunteers enough to make an impact for the future? The thinking behind this um, new office landscape based off of variety and choice is really um, devised around three large topics that we feel were uh, missing from our current model of working. So the first one being focus, uh, the second being interact or collaborate, and then the third being specialty. One of um, the challenges that we face in our current situation is that we have um, limited areas that we can affect. You know, we're not necessarily building out any new rooms if we're specifically talking about focus. And so what are uh, the tools we have in our you know, knowledge and um, our community to address that, but in a, a furniture solution. And so I think that's um, a huge part of what we'll be able to layer into the existing open office. And I think it's important that we're not just saying that one type of focus is what we're going to um, address, but we're actually putting several different types of components in there so that you can test focusing in very different ways. We all work differently, and I think this is a chance to acknowledge and recognize that. So one of the things I think we want to try to do with this new build out is to facilitate, you know, there will be some people that are station, stationary or kind of anchors, but to facilitate an office based on choice. And so, you know, a good number of us will now be internally mobile, you know, will be required or expected to come to the office. Not that there won't be a little bit of flexibility for working mothers and others to, to have a more flexible schedule, but, um, you know, we, we want to come together, we want to be in the office, and then when we're here, give a greater um, array of spatial types for people to do whatever it is that they need to do on that day. So in going through the design process, um, we looked at the floor and in terms of the minimal amount of space that we had to work with, what could we do that would have the biggest impact? And where we kind of fell through a number of studies was um, the perimeter zone on the floor, the, the outer ring of the floor plan. And so by taking out large chunks of the existing workstations and dropping in what we're calling new work settings, which are settings that focused on um, activity work, focus work, and collaboration zones, uh, we were able to kind of create a semi-activity-based planning zone amongst our existing layout. One of my favorite examples from the 1970s is that famous Reese's peanut butter cup commercial where one person's holding a piece of chocolate and one person's holding a jar of peanut butter and they accidentally bump into each other. So in physical space they are colliding and they realize that putting those two unrelated things together actually created something uh, more valuable, more interesting. And uh, I always thought that was a great uh, metaphor for this type of, this idea of cultivated serendipity. I think the Office Refresh Project is a great opportunity for us to actually walk the talk and to do what our clients in this region are asking us to do for them on a daily basis. This is an exciting challenge for Gensler. We can treat this as a research project and document new ways of working for the next five years. And I think that the way our office um, should shift is it should be a space that is designed for co-creation. Very important for us to be able to step into the place where we are experimenting with big ideas on ourselves. It will absolutely be chaotic. Um, and that's not a bad thing. I think creative chaos can enable us to learn a lot more. My hope would be that it's a place where not only our staff is inspired to do their best work, but we create a place where we can co-collaborate with our clients, that they're also inspired by our place. We want to use the next five years to learn, to experiment, to grow, to make mistakes, to fail big if necessary. Uh, it might not be pretty, but it, if we do it right, to quote Steve Jobs, it could be insanely great. <laughs>